Hey, how are you doing? Scotty from Scott's Bass Lessons. Hope you're well. If you haven't been to scottsbasslessons.com yet, make sure you do, do so straight after this lesson because there is hours and hours and hours of free video lessons just like this for completely free. So go check them out. So this week I want to, well, I'm actually going to, I'm stealing a couple of exercises actually. My mate, um, Johnny, John Boy, you know who you are. Um, last week, he, um, he sat down at my place and he was just playing, playing on the bass. He's actually he's a keyboard player. And um, he was like, oh, dude, you've got to check out these, these, uh, these exercises that this bass player showed me. You know, he's just working on technique. And I'm always looking for, you know, different ideas and exercises for my students. And they were great. So I just thought, you know, I'm going to, you know, share them with you right now. They're to do with, you know, just sort of like easing up the, or not easing up, but just getting independence of the fingers in your fretting hand, okay? There's a lot of people that have problems with using the third and the fourth finger, okay, of their left hand. By the way, uh, don't go out and buy yourself a glove. I've got a, a neurological um, hand condition, that, so I have to wear gloves. It's not cold in the UK at the minute or anything like that. Um, so a lot of people, a lot of bass players, have issues when using the third and fourth finger and from my really basic understanding of anatomy and stuff like that, I think it's because the first, the index and the middle finger have their own tendons, but the third and the fourth finger share tendons, okay? They're shared tendons or something like that anyway. That's, yeah, yeah, this is, this is the truth, honestly. Dr. Scott says so. But anyway, I think they share tendons, and that's why it's really hard to to get the independence in your third and fourth finger, which is why a lot of people don't even use their fourth finger. And these exercises are going to get you using that, that pinky because you need to. If you're going to be playing, you know, all over the bass neck, you really need to get that fourth finger into check and get it working. So the first exercise, okay, it sounds crazy, this exercise as well, but it really works. The first exercise, we're going to start on the, the C, okay, of the G string. And we're just going to play C and then with our third finger, an A. And I should say as well, I want you to assign a finger per fret, okay? So your fingers should be hovering over the frets that you're going to play. And to do this as well, you need your bass to be, you know, not too high, but you can't do it with it dangling down here. It can't be too low because if you get too low, the, you know, you're just not going to be able to open your hand well enough to stretch it like that. Now there isn't much of a stretch there, but as if you get, get down here, it is. And equally, you've got to have your thumb on the back of the neck as well, because if you do this, this movement, if you play like this, you're never gonna be able to, you're never gonna be able to do this. Okay, the thumb needs to be on the back of the neck, not like this, you're not strangle it, you know. It's not a baseball bat, it's a base. Bass, baseball bat. Anyway, sorry, my bad humour. Anyway, moving on. Uh, so, the beginning of the exercise, yeah, we will rewind back to the exercise. So, first finger on the C, third finger on the A. And it's just remember the pattern, it's more of a pattern other than notes, okay? So, C, A, C sharp, A sharp, okay? So, C on the, D, on the G string, A on the D string, with the second finger, C sharp and then A sharp on the D string. So just get used to that movement and play slowly. Okay, so and then we've got with a third finger on a D and then the first finger on the G. And then little finger on the D sharp, and then second finger on the G sharp. So really slowly, I'll take you through the pattern. So you learn this, it's a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's an eight note pattern, and then we just move it a string down, okay? So two, three, four.
again. Now let's move it down to the next string. Next string. And then you just move up, down on the E flat with your first finger. Down to the next string. is relaxed okay they're ready they're ready to play the notes they're not you know there's no exaggerated movements you know with what we all I don't well I don't know most of us have suffered from the old pinky salute you know you play a scale your little finger sticks out like that. I know I used to suffer from that a lot. But it's exercises like this that help me get past that problem. So again, you want to work on relaxing the hand, but keeping all your fingers engaged and ready to play them notes. So that's the first exercise. Again, take it slow. If you want to keep a check on your time and, um, and log kind of how fast you can do it, um, you can use a metronome to do that. Just make a note of, your, of, um, of what time you're doing at um, and then try and speed it up over time, obviously. That's quite fast, but I'd really recommend it's more about the consistency and keeping your fingers relaxed. I can even play it now. So the next exercise that you showed me, this is really cool, this. And it's something that just, it's, it's, it gives your fingers a little bit of independence. It's training the brain. Again, the brain, we're you know, people try and change their technique all the time. And although we think about, oh, we want to do this, we want to make smaller movements, it doesn't happen. And it doesn't happen because we need to train our brain to send a completely different movement. Many of us will have bad habits that we need to break, and it's not as simple as just thinking, oh, it's just a bad, you know, it's not like, um, it's not like a bad habit like putting too much salt on your food or something like that, where you can actually just physically stop doing it. You can't do that with movements. You need to train the brain to send a different movement. And you do that by slowing it down and giving the motor cortex, which is around here on your head, um, giving the motor to the cortex the chance to learn that new movement and then it reprograms itself and then sends the new signal. Really interesting stuff. So this next exercise is it's just four fingers per fret, okay? And what I want you to do is play one, two, three, four, okay? Now, when you've, if that stretches too much, let's play it around here. So maybe start with your, um, your first finger on the C. One, two, three, four. And when you've got all the four down, I want you to hold them down. One, two, three, four, okay? And then I want you to play the same on the next string, but only move your fingers when you need to play them, okay? Leave them on this string until you need them, okay? So check this out. Have the. Did you see what I was doing there? So what I'm going to do now is I'll leave the, the notes ringing on so you can hear it. So I'm leaving that second note down, third, fourth, leaving that. It's 
a really strange exercise because it's harder. The slower you do it, the harder it is. If you were to do it fast, Ah, it's still hard. So you're leaving the fingers holding on right to the last moment where they need to be used and then you're moving them across. So that's the two technique buster exercises for this week. Hopefully you'll get these into your practice time and get that left hand working really well. Remember, the technique is a big deal, you know, these bass lines you're hearing on these records that you want to play, you're going to be doing yourself an injustice if your technique isn't up to scratch because you'll be trying to play stuff, you know, it's trying to sort of like, you know, sprint against somebody but like holding one leg at the same time. You, need, you know, you need to be sort of like having everything working together correctly as it should do. So before I go, I just want to say thanks for watching this. If you enjoyed it, click like below this video. I will love you forever. And other than that, after this video, well, which is now, go over to the website, check it out, scottsbassessons.com. If you sign up, you get access to the backstage area, which has and the backing track library, which is completely free, and some courses in there as well, like the modes course. And I think we've got something about buying bases and what you should look into for doing that. So there's a load of cool stuff. And there's hours and hours of free videos on the website anyway. So take it easy, and I'll see you in the shed.